I'm Mackenzie with the Beaverton City Library and right now for me at least it's November which means it is Native American Heritage Month. If you're not already doing so this is a great time to celebrate Native and Indigenous lives and read related stories. This month I'm talking about a few classic children's books that many of us have nostalgic feelings about. This video is about The Indian in the Cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks and it is sometimes requested by adults for their children or for their students to read. In fact, I remember reading and enjoying this book when I was younger. However, um, recently I have learned that this book includes harmful depictions of native and indigenous peoples and culture. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the critiques and give some alternative book recommendations. A few things to start off with. I read this book as a child and I enjoyed reading it when I was younger. I loved playing with dolls and stuffed animals and, at least in theory, I would have loved if any of my toys had come to life. However, as an adult, like I said, I learned about the hurtful misrepresentations of Native and Indigenous peoples and learned that there are better options that more authentically depict Native and Indigenous peoples and culture. Number two, I just want to acknowledge that I am a white woman and I am heavily borrowing research and critical analysis from Dr. Debbie Reese who founded AICL, or American Indians in Children's Literature, Paula Giza, and Doris Seal. First of all, when Omri, um, in this book, the kid, first starts talking with Little Bear, who's the toy, uh, Omri gets him a teepee and a horse, and Little Bear, as you can see, is dressed in garb that is typical from tribes from the Great Plains. However, Little Bear states that he is an Iroquois brave and the peoples of the Iroquois Confederacy lived in longhouses, not teepees. They did not traditionally use horses and they dressed in very different garb. Little Bear even notes that the markings on the teepee that Omri gives him are of the Algonquin tribe and changes them to Iroquois markings. But the Algonquin people didn't live in teepees either. They lived in birch bark houses or wigwams. Additionally, Little Bear speaks in a very stilted pattern um, throughout the whole book. But on pages 10 to 11, here's one example. He says, you come near me, I hurt you, and I not small, you big. There are characteristic speech patterns for those who are also native speakers, but nobody in the history of the world has ever spoke this way. You may choose to have direct conversations with your kids about this book. You can also choose to read other books. For example, In the Footsteps of Crazy Horse by Joseph Marshall III. In this story, you travel with Jimmy McLean and his grandfather, Niles High Eagle, as Jimmy learns about the history of Crazy Horse, all of whom are of the Lakota tribe. This book depicts Lakota tribe members who lived in the present day and in the past. And it's also important to note that the author is a member of the Sikangu Lakota tribe. And when the author's cultural and lived experience matches with the main characters in the book, we call these own voices titles. Another own voices title to consider is Fatty Legs by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Uliman Pokiak Fenton. This is a nonfiction book about one young girl who attended a residential school in Canada's Northwest Territories. The writing, the illustrations, and the photos, they all really bring this true story to life. Now, if you are interested in, in reading more books, I recommend using Debbie Reese's suggestions for how to best choose Native and Indigenous stories. Number one, choose books that are tribally specific. Both In the Footsteps of Crazy Horse and Fatty Legs, both of these books are tribally specific. Two. Use present tense verbs to talk about Native nations. Native and Indigenous stories do not just belong in the past. Native peoples are continuing to live and celebrate their culture in the present day. And as I noted in the footsteps of Crazy Horse, it is ultimately set in the present day with flashback stories um, that go back in history. Number three, choose books by Native writers, whether they're about Native characters or not. And number four, have your children and students read books by Native writers all year round, not just in November. Remember, Beaverton City Library staff are happy to help you find more culturally relevant and appropriate books. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.